lodestone. But um, I mentioned something called cast buffering, or, or input buffering. Uh, this input buffering comes from like the fighting game community. If you're not uh, like a big fan of fighting games, but in Final Fantasy, we can do a very similar technique because black mages play an almost combo game. Um, whenever you're watching a cast bar, right? Like I'm just casting Blizzard Three. There is a period at the end of your cast where you can move without interrupting a spell. That same period of time, you can also input the next spell you intend to cast, and it will just immediately cast that spell afterward because that input is buffered, and the system just picks it up. So there's like no downtime between you don't have to actually try to time like right as your spell finishes, input the next spell. So an example would be, as I get about, about 0.3 seconds, I'm inputting fire, and it immediately casts. It's so like you can see, same thing. I'm just buffering the input every time, and it's basically auto-casting for free at this point, without any interruption. And the, the reason why I talk about this, just in case, is like, I have met some black mages that are not familiar with the fact that this is built into the game, it's part of the system. Um, this is a really handy trick, because it can be done with buffs too, but the thing is you can only input one thing at a time. So typically, if you're trying to uh, weave things, for instance, like when you're doing part of the Fire 4 rotation normally and you're weaving, say, like a sharp cast in between Fire 4s, you can buffer the sharp cast, and as soon as the end of your spell completes, and you see the sharp cast animation start, there's going to be like a hairline second where you can rebuffer the next fire for to cut a little bit of that, like, I mean, we're talking milliseconds at this point. It's really small periods of time, but over time, those milliseconds really, really matter on Black Mage. Uh, especially currently with the amount of spell speed we have to cleanly get some of these rotations off and make sure you stay in Enochian as long as possible so you never have drop-offs of Enochian or any of your buffs. Input buffering is a really, really key thing to know. And most people have figured it out. But I mention it because it is that important, especially now. Uh, it was not as critical at level 50 content where we were just doing fire regular fire casts and looking for fire starter procs. In there, it was more about um, saving some of your instant cast spell timings, like when you had a thundercloud proc, you would cast fire and throw the thundercloud proc at the end of the fire to try and fish for a fighter, fire starter proc, and doing things like throwing um, some of your off GCD skills, like sure cast or something like that at, at the end of your last fire to create that small window to force the system to tell you whether or not you got a fire starter proc, which is a technique that's called fire weaving, if you're not familiar with it. Um, that's what, like, those were the tricks of the trade back then. Buffering your spells didn't matter as much back then. Um, it helped, and it was, like, one of the things that would set a guy doing 350 DPS away from the guy who's doing 375, but it is far more critical now when we're doing Enochian, because every time you're casting a you know 2.8 second spell, 2.9 second spell in a Fire 4, those extra milliseconds, if you're not buffering your spell casts, especially in times where you know you don't have to move for a while, you can get off a few spells in a row, no problem those extra milliseconds add up and that can be at the tail end of an Enochian rotation or if you had to do a movement and now you need to catch back up on your rotation those little milliseconds can matter to maintaining all of your buffs so if you haven't practiced it a lot do so and like I said like it's part this is partially latency based the amount of time so you just have to get used to it but if you watch your cast bar like, you can even do it 0.5 seconds out, and it'll buffer the casts. 
And like you can see where I'm pressing, and it's still picking up those casts. Like if you watch the the fire spells right here, I'll just go into a norm the old rotation, right? So I got fire three. I know you can watch like you can just see fire one lighting up. And we'll do it in a couple different spots here, and you'll just see it like it buffers the spell pretty well. Um, it matters a lot more with Fire 4 because of how long the casts are. So example, right? If I buffer the spell up there, it has no problem coming out. I buffer that Fire 1, and you can see it's just it helps clean up your rotation a little bit when you start getting used to buffering inputs. So that is another, like, I guess you'd say trick of the trade tool that I would highly suggest practicing. Because it, sh shaving those little seconds of time help. And more importantly, um, they also boost your damage. And as we all know, if you're a black mage, the more damage you do, the better you feel about yourself. So that's kind of the, the end of the couple of tutorial topics I wanted to cover.